I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Dave Palumbo here for another RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review, and today's topic is protein. I get probably you know, 10 to 20 emails every week asking me, Dave, how much protein should I eat while dieting versus how much protein should I eat off-season? How much protein is the most I can assimilate per meal? I mean, these are questions we hear all the time. And, and you know something that's very important to understand about protein. Not only do we need protein for rebuilding muscle and repairing muscle, obviously that we damage in the gym, but we're constantly re rebuilding hair, nails, skin. We're replacing these things on a on a daily basis. The lining of our intestinal tract, everything in the body aside from the bones, is made up of of protein. So that protein is in what we call a constant state of turnover, meaning that. You know, the skin cells and the hand cells you have today are not going to be the ones you have, you know, a year from now. They're constantly being replaced. And in order to do that, you need a protein source to do that. You have to consume dietary protein so your body has the building blocks to do that. Now, when you start weight training and breaking down massive amounts of muscle in the gym, your protein requirement goes up dramatically, obviously, because now you're not only just replacing the, 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 the hair scale, uh, skin nails type of situation, you're also remodeling all the protein and, and muscle in your body on a regular basis and, and actually building more than that was there before. So you're replacing what was there and you're adding more. So obviously there's, that intuitively tells you that you need more protein. So for anyone who says, oh, you don't need more protein to build muscle, you know, obviously that's not true, especially if you want to maximize. But the question is how much, right? So there's different values you know, for a situation where you're trying to build muscle versus actually lose uh, body fat and you wouldn't think that that would be the case but it is and I'll tell you why because the body when you eat a lower amount of protein per day your body becomes more efficient at extracting more of that protein and utilizing it whereas when you're trying to add muscle which your body really doesn't want to do okay it doesn't want to carry all this extra muscle weight around you have to eat a lot more protein than you would you know normally uh, just to maintain what you have and that also becomes intuitive. And once again, you have to understand when you're trying to diet down, you're, really, you're not trying to grow while you're dieting down, even though that might take place to a certain or lesser degree. Your, your goal is to maintain what you have and maximize fat loss. So the question, once again, comes back to how much protein and, 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 and why do I have to divide it over several meals a day? Well, the problem with, with protein consumption is that there's no storage facility for it in the body. Like, you know, if you eat extra carbs, your body can store it as glycogen in your muscles or your liver. If you eat too much fat, your body can store it as body fat, obviously, or even there's some intramuscular fat so, uh, stores of, of fat. But for protein, if you... If, if you eat like 200 grams at one meal and your body doesn't need all that protein at that meal, it's going to either, you know, store some of that, you know, as body fat by converting it into carbs and then converting it into body fat, or it's just going to metabolize it as energy, you know, as fuel. So your body can't, you have to spread your protein meals out throughout the day and there's no storage facility. So you can't eat a lot in the morning and a lot at night or just a lot in the morning and not anything the rest of the day because your body will be deficient. Likewise, how much can you extract per meal? And that's always been the question. I remember back in the 80s, you used to say, don't eat more than 30 grams of protein per meal because you can't utilize it. Well, that's ridiculous. First of all, no matter how much food you eat, okay, if you eat 300 grams of protein in one meal, you're going to digest it all. The question is, what is your body going to do with it when you absorb it into your bloodstream? Now, 300 grams of protein, is you, you can't utilize in one sitting, but... How much can you extract out of that? Well, that's dependent upon how much muscle you have. A 300-pound bodybuilder who's got a massive amount of muscle in their body, when they eat a big meal, they can assimilate and utilize a lot more protein um, than the 120-pound the woman can because her protein requirements are not that high. She doesn't have a demand for replenishing that much tissue in her body. So... 
dependent on how much muscle mass you have and how fast your metabolic rate is will dictate how much protein you need per meal. But we know that you need to spread the meals throughout the day because once again, there's no storage facility for protein. So if you're a 250 pound man and you're eating six times a day every two and a half to three hours that you're awake, you know, how much protein you need will be dependent on how much mass you have. So at 250 pounds, I always say, you know, if you want to, you know, sustain your muscle, okay, while dieting and maximize, you know, your, your, your fat loss, you probably need at least a gram of protein per pound that you weigh. So if you're 250, you need to at least eat 250 grams of protein divided over, you know, five or six meals a day. And that, and that gives you a pretty good standard of what, how much you can consume. Does that mean that that's all you can absorb per meal? No, it probably means you can absorb a little more, but once again, we wanna maximize fat loss, so we don't wanna overeat protein either. Now, if you take the opposite approach and you say, well, I wanna put muscle on now, how much do I need to eat? And now you can go to, and start pushing it to the 1.5 grams of protein per pound. So at 250 pounds, you, know, you could probably consume 375, almost 400 grams of protein a day, okay? And you'd probably just be getting enough to really maximize growth. And as you gain weight, you're going to need more protein again. So you need a lot more protein if you're trying to grow than just sustain. And that makes sense because we're trying to build, not only are we repairing the broken down tissue, we're repairing that tissue and then trying to add more tissue because we've subjected the body to, you know, extreme stresses in the gym and the body's natural inclination is to, is to respond by hypertrophying the muscles, making the cells get bigger. And in order to do that, we need more raw materials. Think of building muscle as like a sculptor building a clay statue. You need, if you don't have clay, you can't make the statue, right? You can't mold it. You could change the mold the way it looks, but if you want it to get a, if you want to create a bigger you know, clay image, you need more clay. The clay that our body uses is protein with a certain amount of essential fats also, but we're talking protein consumption now. So you need an, ex an exorbitant amount of protein. Now, I breed snakes, and it's interesting. In part of the season where they're breeding, we don't feed the snakes. So they may go three, four, sometimes five months without any food. And these snakes do not lose any weight. And, and, and I always, you know, you say to yourself, well, how is that possible? Well, because what they do is they lower their metabolic rate, okay? And they are able to sustain their body weight that way. The same thing goes for humans. If you don't eat enough food, you're going to get cold. You're going to shut your metabolic rate down. And you're not going to need, a lot, need as much food. So when you're dieting, your metabolic rate is definitely lower than when you're eating an exorbitant amount, exorbitant amount of food in the off season. So your, your protein requirements as well as your energy requirements are going to be a lot less. And that makes sense. So, you know, I think people sometimes think that they got to eat a tremendous amount of protein while they're dieting or they're going to lose muscle. And that's not the case. Um, to gain muscle, you need to eat a lot of protein, but to, if you're dieting, you can eat a lot less than you think and you will not lose an ounce of muscle. As long as you're giving your body sustained, you know, regular feedings throughout the day, more than likely you will not lose any muscle, especially if you're a woman. Women don't lose muscle. They can go really low and their bodies will just become super efficient at extracting the amino acids it needs for, because let's face it, a lot of times when you eat a high protein diet, a lot of that protein gets wasted as fuel, right? Your, your body, your liver will convert the amino acids into glucose via gluconeogenesis because there's a lot of extra available. The less, the lower the amount of food that you start giving your body, now your body has to say, wait a second, we can't spare some of this protein for, to convert into carbs. We got to save it all for repairing muscle because that becomes your, your uh, body's primary goal, you know, preserving the body. And so, that's where the discrepancy becomes. So remember, off season, a lot more protein. Still evenly spaced. Dieting, pre-contest, a lot less protein you get away with. Evenly spaced, of course, but it's dependent on your muscle mass. So there's never, you can never make a blanket statement that we only need this much protein per day or you can only assimilate this much per meal. You assimilate everything you eat. It's what you do with that protein after you have assimilated it into your bloodstream, which will dictate are you going to turn it into glucose uh, and, and then turn that into body fat? Or are you going to use it lies at all for rebuilding muscle? And once again, the more muscle you have, the more protein you need and the more you can assimilate. So if I'm a, a 350-pound bodybuilder like a big Rammy and I eat you know, 70 grams of protein per meal times eight meals a day, um, I can assimilate all that. 
if I'm a 180 pound bodybuilder and I'm trying to eat the big Ramy diet, I'm probably, not, I don't need all that protein. So I'm gonna utilize a lot of that for energy and I might even store some of that if, if I'm eating an excessive amount as fuel, as, as fat. Now, protein doesn't really convert readily into fat very easily because it has to go through so many different conversions first, but the bottom line is that it can certainly sabotage weight loss if you overeat protein because if your body says, hey, I don't need this protein, turn it into fuel, you're not gonna start digging into stored body fat and using that as fuel if you're overeating protein. And that's why a lot of people who say, oh, I didn't cheat on the diet, but I can't lose any weight. But yet they're, they, they're supposed to be eating six ounces of protein per meal and they're actually eating 10 or 12 ounces per meal. And they're like, well, I'm eating the diet food, but you're overeating the amount you need and your body is utilizing that overuse or that overconsumed protein for fuel. And when your body has a fuel source, through the diet, it's not gonna dig into stored body fat. So you have to have a very defined you know, idea in your mind and strategy as to how you're gonna either lose weight and or gain weight. And if you do that, you're gonna have a lot of success. I hope this little uh, talk helped you visualize better you know, what to do and how your body utilizes protein. If you have any suggestions for topics, put it in the comments below. I'm Dave Palumbo for another Supplement and Science Review.